Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Carino, your host, and our guest today is Ruth Bergner Flood. Ruth, you've been around Wadsworth and everyone knows you, and a lot of people know you for a lot of reasons, and we're going to get into that, like hairstyling and all of that kind of thing. But before we do that, how about telling us a little bit about the Bergners? Um, they, people probably still call you Ruth Bergner because Once in a while. you've been around Wadsworth all of your life. Tell us a little bit about your early growing up days, where you lived, who your parents were, who your family members were, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, we lived in Doyle. I was born in Doylestown. And well, we uh, called the Doylestown, but we probably didn't even think of it in those days as being part of Doylestown because no. it's all part of the farms around right. here. Mm -hmm. And um, my father was Lloyd Bergner, and my mother was Anna Solzbach. And it's spelled Solzbach, S-O-L-Z. S-U-L-Z. S-U-L-Z. B-A-C-H. C-H. Uh -huh. And then she had a brother here in town that she not... Uh, William, yes. William, Bill Sol Solzbach. He lived on down um, South Main Street. Right. Mm -hmm. And also his son lived there, Russell. Russell mm -hmm. Solzbach, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. And we'll get to the Solzbachs too pretty soon because that was a big family here in Wadsworth. Um, so we had the Bergners and the Solzbach, two good German families got right. together. Right, uh, Did Were their parents born in Germany? My grandfather Solzbach was. Um, I'm not sure about my grandfather Bergner. He, I didn't even know him. Didn't know him at all. And um, I think he died when my, when Donna was a baby, so I didn't know him at and all. We'll be talking about didn't Donna know much too. about him. When were you born? And where, and um, I guess when were you born? Then we can talk about uh, your memories of where you mm -hmm. were born. I was born March the 29th, 1916. So that makes you about 82 years old, right? 83 years 83 old. 83 years old, that's yes. right, oh, March of 29th. And I had a twin sister. Right, and her name was? Ruby. And where's Ruby? She's deceased she's also. Nice. But she lived how long? Oh, she's been gone about 15 years. 15 years, mm -hmm. and whom did she marry? She was married to Harold Simpson. Harold Simpson, mm -hmm. right and we'll get to your marriage as well. Tell us a little bit about what you remember and where uh, geographically your home was down there in the south part of Wadsworth and in Doylestown. Well, in Doylestown where we were born, we lived on what was called Church Street, but we lived on a farm just outside of town. Right, and the farm is still there. Um, yes, there's a farm there. Mm -hmm. Then we moved on up to the next farm. Which was? And lived there. It was on the same, just same? above us. Just yes. above you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. There was like a woods and a uh, pasture field between. And the, those farms were right beneath what is now called Eastern Road. And across the street from Eastern Road or across the road from Eastern Road is Wadsworth. No, Church Street is right downtown in Doylestown. Yes, but it goes kind of at an angle, doesn't it? Well, when you get to the first light. Yeah, it goes to an it, angle. It goes, to, you go make a left turn. Church, the Methodist Street, the Methodist Church is on that street. And that's why they call it Church Street? Yes, mm -hmm. I suppose, yeah. Okay. And then when did you move to Wadsworth? In um, 19, well, I think it was 27. 27, you were, you were actually about 12 years old or something yes. like that? I was 11, might have been 26. Yeah. But, 26 uh, or 27 in that yes. area, you moved to Wadsworth. And where did you move here in Wadsworth? We moved on Pine Street. Um, an uncle of mine had real, was in real estate. He had a house down there that he wanted to sell. So and we who, moved there. Who was your uncle? Clyde Bergner. It was my dad's brother. And what kind of real estate did he have? Oh, heavens, it's so long ago. I don't know what it was. He, he's, I know he was in selling. He had this house for sale. We only lived there six weeks, and it was sold. Oh, really? We thought it was great. It had a, it had a fireplace in every bedroom. <laughs> So we wow. thought it was great. It was a nice, it had been a very nice house. And probably had a bathroom too. Oh, sure, it had Which we did not have in the farm. No, mm -hmm. no. Uh, people cannot believe that we had outside privies, all of us, everyone. Oh, yes, you know. oh, yes. Even in the city, they used to have outside privies years, years ago. And they had people who came around to clean them. Um, and in the farms, they never did get inside plumbing until much, 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 much later. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. What do you remember about your girlhood days uh, in, um, on Pine Street and where, where else you lived? Well, we, started, we had to start, we went up to um, Central School at that mm -hmm. time and uh, 
I was trying to think of some of our neighbors. Biamai's were one. Right. And uh, Ferrars were our neighbors. Right. And uh, all, all the. Uh, this good German family with all those Italians right. down there. <laughs> right. And you never thought anything about it? No. Never. No, no, no. No. Never thought. Who were some of the other neighbors that you had down um, there at the time? I'm trying to think who else was down there. Um, well, Mary and Mary and Pauline, um, Mary Atkins or Pauline Atkins and Mary. Oh yes, a Moss. they lived on the other corner only. Uh, M Mary Moss. Yes, but, but they, Mary, they she was Mary Crisofoli. Crisofoli is what right, I'm trying to say. Right, Crisofoli. And Mary Crisofoli. Yes. They married Mary Atkins and Mary. Um, Mary uh, Moss. Pauline Atkins and Mary Moss. That's right. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, Pauline yes. Atkins and Mary Moss. Right. But they were the Crisofoli girls, right? Yes. Yes. And they lived right down in there, mm -hmm. too. Um, Stolich has lived up on the corner. The Stolich family, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. They uh, And they had a little store in their house, right. you know, like yes. so many people did at that time. And their living room or the right yes. where you would walk yes. in uh -huh. and uh, just mm -hmm. staples, nothing, no, mm -hmm. not, not anything like we have stores today mm -hmm. where they have uh, books, magazines, uh, nails and everything Most else. Most anything just, you want. Yeah. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about the Stolages. Their name has come up a few times, and we can't yeah. seem to find anyone who could give us a lot of history about them. What do you remember about the Stolages? Well, they had three children, mm -hmm. Bob and Violet, and um, I can't think of the older girl's name. She was, um, I want to say hunchback, whatever they were mm -hmm. called now. They yeah, probably she a little was, scoliosis or something. Uh, yes, and uh, she was the oldest girl. Violet was the youngest, and of course, Bob was the oldest. So. Now, uh, are any of those people living yet? I'm not sure. Of course, you know, Bob's gone. Yeah, but, I know uh, Bob was gone. But I don't know. I'm not sure about the girls. See, one of the problems we have is that we remember their maiden names. Yes. But we don't know their, their married names. Right. And then every now and then, when people see this program, they say, well, you know, she married such and such. And it turns out to be a person whom we've all known, but we didn't right. realize that that was her maiden name or right. married name. I still call you uh, Ruth Bergner, you well, know. Once in a while, own I mind. get that from somebody else. Yes. Uh, and um, I have to, uh, with Donna, your sister, your older sister, who's what, 92? 92 years old now. Uh, I knew her as um, Donna Bergner for so long that I oftentimes wonder was now was her maiden name Bergner or was it Lind? <laughs> because we always called her Donna Bergner, you know. Mm -hmm. Then she married Milo Lind uh, right. uh, many, many years later. Ruth, uh, tell us a little bit about your mother and father and where they were born and uh, mm -hmm. a little bit about, you know, the uncles and aunts because um, they are still, some of them are still around. Well, if they were alive, they would still be around, yes, but yes. your cousins are still around. Mm -hmm. But tell us about your mom and dad. Well, my mother, my mother was born in Doylestown and lived there all her life until we moved to Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. And she had um, four brothers and two sisters. And uh, her brothers all lived in Doylestown. Right. Uh, ex well, then eventually um, William moved to Wadsworth. Well, Bill moved but, to Wadsworth, yeah. But the other, well, I shouldn't say all of them. One moved to Indiana. They worked in the coal mines at that well, time. Well, everyone did around here yes. at that time. <laughs> so why we, and, that's uh, why we exist, you know, yes, we work in the yes. postman. Now, the, um, Uncle Bill's, uh, William Solspaw's da daughters were who? Well, Esther, um, oh shoot, I know her name. Esther, Esther, she was a teacher. But she lived, after she married, she lived around Clinton and taught down at, mm -hmm. uh, what's the school down there around Canal I think Canal Fulton, Fulton I believe. Yeah, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. And then, Ralph lived up the street from us, he and his wife, and of course Russell lived down on South Main. And right. they had that little store for a while down there, you know, sold eggs and a few little right, things like right, that. Right, right, right. Tell us a little bit about that store. It was kind of quaint. There's some nice things about it. That, well, that, really, I don't know much about the you? store. Mm -hmm. I would stop in there once in a while, but I really didn't know and much they, about uh, the store. Ralph was your cousin. It, that was Russell that had the uh, Russell, store. Russell, yes. Russell had and the yeah, store. And he, he was my mother's nephew. So your first cousin. Yes. Right. Yes. What about your father? Tell us about his family. Um, well, he had uh, brother. He just had brothers. There were five boys in that family. One, I think, uh, died when he was just a baby. Now, one of the cousins, the one of the Bergners, married a um, Snyder girl, did he not? Um, one of my, no, let's see. Did my it, cousin, who, who are you thinking of? The one who lived up north of town on, on High Street. Did he marry uh, Grace Snyder? No, not Grace Snyder, but um, 
Did he marry a Snyder girl? I don't believe. Okay, maybe that's a different burglar then. I do. What, uh, which co whom did your cousins marry here in town? Well, actually, there are no burglars here in town other than my family. Okay, my dad's in other words, they, that's a different burglar that was up town, north of town then. Yes. We want to establish that. There are two different. There are other. I can't think who it would have been up in north of town. Uh, I'm sure he married um, a Snyder girl, and uh, that would be. Um, let's see if I can get this. Uh, may give you, give you a little bit of a clue here. Um, June Mackey Sandals was her niece because this woman was June Mackey Sandals' mother's sister. Well, maybe I don't know. I have no idea. Not probably not the same family then. Tell us then about. Um, uh, you say that you never knew your your grandfather Bergner, mm -hmm. but you knew your grandfather Solzbach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And. Um, he came from Germany. Yes. And where in Germany? I don't know exactly where he came from. I've heard different sto different stories, oh, sure but I know. absolutely don't know. Well, many people. Where, but you know, one time I have a cousin, and his wife who traveled quite a lot, and we're over in Germany in Switzerland, and this was a Stanley Solzbach and his wife, and he uh, was. His, he and his wife separated were doing different things. He was looking in a store window. And he went in, and when he went in, the woman inside said, you know, you startled me. You look just like my husband. No kidding. And uh, so they were able to talk. She didn't speak too much English. So she asked him to come back that evening that her son would be there and they could speak. So he, they came back. And they did find out that. Uh, they were related. Yes, they were. That. Uh, one of my grandfather's brothers had settled there, and this was Isn't that some of something? his family. Oh my heavens! Yes, that would world. be it. Well, that, that's a story. <laughs> that's a story, Ruth. My heavens, that's great. Pine Street. From Pine Street, where? We moved to Broad Street. Tell us where on where, Broad Street. Where the uh, right on the corner of Broad and South Lyman. Mm -hmm. um, what was where there? Where um, the Marathon Station is there right. now. Mm -hmm. And what was there? When you first it was a nice house. It was a uh, beautiful house. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. and it was a shame to tear it down. Oh, good. Yes, one of the problems is that we, you know, we, we tear so many things down. Yes. That um, could be still a beautiful, uh, a an element of beauty. Um, what was right next door to your house? Uh, a service station service on the one station. side. On the other corner, uh, Mrs. Sunnestein lived in that big house over there. The Sunnesteins are, are very, very old yes. here in town, yes. too. What was Mrs. Sunnestein doing at the time? What was? Uh, well, she was retired. She, she, was she retired. had never. Uh, but what but had she done in her earlier days? I don't know what she had ever done, mm -hmm. if anything, you know. They, their name goes back in the history books oh, for yes. years and oh, years yes. and years. Um, who were the neighbors to the south of you then when you were living on? on um, um, Jerry Hall and his Jerry wife. Jerry Hall, uh -huh. that's right. And then uh, Harry Minch lived next to them. And Harry Minch has a, a, a significance because he had the gas station. Yeah, he, he and then he he bought that corner and right. put up the, the tore the house down and put the or the I guess Standard Oil did it, but he had the station. But he was the he was there for years. Yes. And then yes. They, they put the diner there too. Yes, uh -huh, on the now, corner. Now the diner was not exactly where your house was. No, it was right on the corner. Right on the corner, oh, but your house was down a little bit farther yes, than that. Yes. Yes. Across the street where the well, we have some several stores now, and where the Ford garage used to be, and so forth. That was the Sunnesteins. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, then, who was the doctor who lived on the north? East corner in the big brick house, which still stands. Uh, I just could think of Dr. Uh, Biggs. Victor Biggs, yes. Dr. Uh -huh. Biggs, and uh -huh. did you remember him? Oh yes. Oh, and did yes. you remember his wife at all? Oh yes. Tell us a little bit about Mrs. Biggs. Well, she was she was a very nice lady. The, the way I knew her, much about her at all, uh, she had several nieces that lived up the street from us, and they were with Mrs. Biggs and her sister quite often. Do you remember who those nieces were? Oh, yes. They were Stephanie and um, Douglas and... Uh, but their last name wasn't Biggs, though. No, no. Their, their dad was Mrs. Biggs' nephew. Right. And what was, the, what was their last name? Do you remember? Their name was Douglas. Oh, Douglas. Douglas, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. And you remember these people? 
Very well. What do you remember about Dr. Biggs? Tell us a little bit about his stature. And oh, well, he wasn't a, too big a man. No. Mm -hmm. um, rather quiet. Quiet, very, very quiet. Yes. Good doctor. Yes. Everyone liked him. Um, actually practiced until the 40s, did he oh, not? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And you oh, were Oh, yes. It was um, maybe 50 when he retired. I don't know. No, I mean in, I know. in 1940s. Yes. Nineteen forties. He was still practicing. Oh yes, yes. Uh, I don't know know exactly when he stopped practicing, but I do know that he was practicing in the forties, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because um, a friend of ours went to him and said um, I, I, he had a little bit of a heart problem. Mm -hmm. Went to him and just had all the faith in the world for a good reason because he was an excellent doctor. And uh, Doctor Big said, um, "Fine, you're coming along really well." He walked out of the living room or out of the waiting room, mm -hmm. out the front door, and dropped dead on the front steps. Oh, Do yes. you remember that? I remember it. I remember even of hearing that at different times, too, mm -hmm. you know. This the person's happened. name, and I can't think of it right this second, but I know that um, I know that I can think of it. But I'm, I'll get some calls tonight to tell me exactly who oh, that yes. was. because we, uh, And I appreciate those calls because that helps us to fill in the blanks yes. and the things that we have somewhat forgive, forget. Um, who was living there in that house with you at the time? Your mom, your dad, and your two sisters. And then um, people that had the bakery downtown had a couple of rooms upstairs. And that was the George? No. Um, Cools? No, no. Which bakery? They, was, they were French. Oh, heck, what was their name? I can't think of their but name. But they lived now. upstairs. They lived upstairs. They, they lived there when we moved in. Where, was the, where was the bakery? On... Um, on the east side of Main Street, down, well, around the area where the, where Anschutz um, almost furniture to, store Almost is. to the school. Yes, it mm -hmm. wasn't too far from the school. And I can't remember that name either, but we'll come up with that one too. Someone will call us mm -hmm. tonight and tell us about that. That's right. Um, tell us, Ruth, um, what you remember about the traffic at that time. Was there much? There wasn't a lot of traffic then. Not too much at no, all. No. Do you remember when the first traffic light was put up in there? No, I don't remember. Remember that? Well, we didn't live down there then. Oh, you didn't live no, down there? No, because we moved from there to Crestwood. Then you went up to Crestwood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Crestwood at that time was... A it was a new street. New street mm -hmm. built by uh, Ray Holcomb's yes. father. Well, uh -huh. And you couldn't have lived in too many or too far up Crestwood because it stopped only after the fifth or sixth well, house. this is in the, yeah, down close to the park. Close to the park. Mm -hmm. uh, who lives there now, do you know? I have no idea Which who house was now. it? Could you tell us? It was the second house from the corner second on, house from the, on corner the west side. Where Ray Schultz used to live then, right? No, Ray lived on the other side. Oh, on the west side. Of, okay, all right. On, Ray he, lived across the... He lived on the east side. We lived right, on, the on the west, west side. side. And that would be uh, probably and one. They, they lived up about the third house. Third house um, was it? I know that they lived somewhere uh -huh. close in that area. Uh -huh. Who were the neighbors there then, do you remember? Well, people across the street were Inc. Tom English and his family. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the Blows lived next door. On and there are a lot of Blows, and yes. they're all interrelated. But yes. which Blows was this? Um, they, they moved from here and didn't stay in Wandsworth. Okay. Oh, I know his wife's name was Ethel, but I can't think mm -hmm. of his name. He, he uh, had been, I'm not sure. And then um, old people that had the, uh, at one time, sailors lived in the next mm -hmm. house. T.J. Sailors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Banker. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, Weltsines. Weltsines lived there, uh huh. And uh, Ackermans. And, yes, they all, they all lived there. Cons. Cons. Yeah, they lived there at one time, too. Cons, yes. Ackermans, yeah. and... Um, there were several families lived in um, this one. Villanoeth? No, they didn't live on... They didn't uh, live there? They didn't live on Crestwood. Um, she well, married... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think... Uh, uh, Verna, Welsey Verna, lived... Verna, Verna Creekbaum. Creekbaum, Creekbaum. Yeah, they lived uh, on up, yes. Yeah, they lived Creekbaum. next to Welsings. Yeah, Creekbaum. And then... Um, oh... Well, it was a coach at Barberton. It uh, just Harder. died. Carl Harder. Carl mm -hmm. Harder's mm -hmm. lived next there. And Weston Barger's lived up in there. Weston Barger's, right. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the street. Uh. So that was just about the end of the street. At that time, yeah, yes. Yeah, it was a field beyond that, mm -hmm. was it mm -hmm. not? At that mm -hmm. time. Uh -huh. Who lived right on the corner house right south of you? Oh, we had people by the name of um, Ed. I can't think of their name. They came from New Jersey. At that time, they lived there, but then different families had moved there. and. 
maybe didn't stay. I mm -hmm. did. I don't remember. What year do you think that you moved to uh, Crestwood? Oh, let's see. I'm not sure. Um, we were probably freshmen in high school, so that would have been a, about 15, 30, 14, 40. 15, mm -hmm. somewhere in that yes, area. Uh -huh. High school. The old teachers, we've, we've, we've gone over those um, quite a few times. I but, know, I've heard, I hear. Yeah, and you still remember some of those old teachers, yes. uh, Lape and T.J. Lape and um, uh, Kenny Giffen and, yes. and all of those, O.J. Work, Frank Close, mm -hmm. the, the rest of them. However, who were the friends with whom you palled around in high school, male and female? Well, mostly male, mostly female at that time. Yeah, that's right. Um, Mildred Bixler, Mild Shunaby Bixler, Mild uh, Mildred Shunaby, and then there was uh, Doris and Doreen Beck, who were right. twins mm -hmm. also, and um, oh, Jane Gaston, Jane Witchy, Gaston, Witchy. Mabel Smith Christian, mm -hmm. and there was Laura Louise Stauffer, uh, right. Edis, Edis, mm -hmm. and um, old Virginia uh, Roth Smith. Yes, Virginia Roth Smith. We all, you know, we were just. Now, she married Hank Smith, yes, didn't she? Yes. Uh, who was with the Ohio Match, I believe, um, at the time. Um, and then she had a sister, Barbara Roth, as well. Yes. Uh, sister um, Kate, too. Laura, Laura Stauffer, Edith, I think, lives now in one of the Carolinas. Yes, I think it's Carolina. She lives near her son, anyway. Yeah, down I, there. I just talked with her daughter a few Her daughter lives on Broad Street. Yes. yes. Uh, Carol, uh, Ramona Wano uh, yes. lives here. Yes. And uh, whom else did you mention? Um, um, well, I mentioned uh, Mabel Smith, Mabel, Mabel Christian. Mabel Christian. And, and uh, well, Betty Bolick. Betty Bolick. Mm -hmm. uh, who else was I thinking of? I was thinking of all these people last night, but then I. Francis um, Potts was in our class, mm -hmm. and uh, and then some of the, when we were a little younger, um, Tom. Well, they all went through. We went through school together. Thomas James, Jim Close. Jim Close, Tom James. Uh, Bob uh, Young. Bob Young. Bob Young and Don Kreider, and uh, Bob. Um, Gates, Bob, Bob Wiley. Gates, uh -huh. Bob Wiley. Yes. Wiley is his yeah, radio I, name. I just saw him a few weeks ago. He I'm was... trying to get him on the program. Are you? Yes, I haven't been able to reach him. I have his telephone number. Mm -hmm. He lives in South Carolina or something. Yes, South... in Winsboro, I Winsboro, believe. Winsboro, South Carolina. Uh -huh. uh, Bob Gates um, from Clark's Corner is Laura yes. Gates and Harry Gates' uh -huh. son. Went by Bob Wiley because he's a radio announcer. And yes. I knew him as a radio announcer uh -huh. when I used to do quite a bit of work with radio. Um, when I was at the university, I did mm -hmm. quite a bit of work, and Bob was always there. And I would like to get Bob on the program. Mm -hmm. So if you see Bob again, he was up here, you say? Just a few weeks. He came up with a son and his wife, I believe. They came for a wedding. Oh, my sort. heavens, I wish I would have known that. And he didn't stay here. You know, he was a brother-in-law of Howard Dressler. Howard Dressler, yes. Well, so uh, he came uh, to Howard's with first him. wife uh, was his sister, Harriet. Uh-huh. Uh, Harriet died. Yes, yes. Harriet, yes. Harriet Gates died. Mm -hmm. Uh, 10, 15, 10, 10 or 12 years ago, something mm -hmm. like, maybe more than that, I'm not really sure. Um, and um, the um, uh, people older than you, do you remember some of those people? Yes, I remember them. Now, don't ask me their names. But well, can you remember, <laughs> remember one who is older than you? Um, <laughs> male. A male. Well, let's see. Maybe his initials were K, F, like oh, Kenny. Yeah, Kenny Flood. <laughs> <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been a long time uh, for you yes, to it is. Now, how did you How did you meet Kenny Flood? In school. In school. I know what we. <laughs> I was in French class, and he was another class across in the next building. But we could look across, you know. When you say the next building, you're not talking. <laughs> I don't about, mean the next building. You know, I mean just in the same building. But the same we, building. there was a. There's a little alcove yes, there, and you can between, see across, yeah, and you saw yes, Kenny. Uh -huh. Kenny saw you. Mm -hmm. And then, for whatever reason, Kenny made sure that he left the class early enough to get in front of the door so that he could see you. Well, again, I don't right? know what happened. <laughs> anyway, we Tell us a little bit about that romance in high school. Well, I was a sophomore. He was a senior. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, it wasn't, there wasn't much. It just, you know, 
things. No, in those school. days there could not. And have been we, much. you know, we didn't have money to go any place. So, uh, uh, of course, we didn't pay much to go to the show then. Like no. maybe thirty-five cents that time. You're I'm talking not sure. early thirties. Oh yes. And when did you graduate? Thirty-four. Thirty-four, and Kenny graduated, I think, in thirty-one 32. or thirty-two. 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 So you're, you're talking about some really, really, really rough days. Yes, it was. Uh, financially. Mm -hmm. And um, no one had any money. Yeah. I mean, so the only fun that you could have would be, you know, just talking and sharing and That's things right. like or that. Or we'd get together on Saturday nights, mm -hmm. a group and... and uh Group. That was yeah, the. That's yeah, the. Uh -huh. The operant word here is group. Rarely did you all go. I mean, did you ever go out on dates by yourselves? Is that right? Not too many. No. no mothers and fathers didn't permit that. They're no. smarter than we are today. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell us about some of the things that you would do when the evenings on, uh, say, for instance, on um, uh, Saturday nights or whatever. Well, you know what we do. What? Go downtown and park and watch the people. Isn't that something? Yes. Hundreds and hundreds of people. I've heard more people say mm -hmm. that. People our age say that. They would watch the people on Saturday nights. Of course, the stores park. were open. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we it was entertainment. <laughs> it was really real entertainment. And it was good entertainment, too. Yes. And uh, the thing that I've never been able to understand is that all of these people went down on Saturday night to watch the people. Mm -hmm. Who were the people who were walking if everyone was watching? <laughs> oh, heavens, it's hard. It could have been anybody. Of course. Anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm being and a little bit facetious here. Once in a while, they had uh, uh, a program on the square, uh, a talent program, you know, and you could, mm -hmm. if you could mm -hmm. sing, if you could play an instrument, whatever, you know, you could be in that, and occasionally they'd have that. Tell One time, my, my sister and I sang. What did you sing? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what we sang anymore, but um, because but there were different ones, you know, people that young people that we knew that mm -hmm. did the same thing. What um, what happened after graduation when Kenny graduated, in 1932? There wasn't a job to be found any, absolutely no, anywhere, no. nowhere, nowhere. Eventually, he, he started to work at the box board. But what did he do before? I didn't do too much before. Sure, nothing to do. No. I mean, that, that he helped was, some at home in the summer when they yeah. had to, uh, their garden, and garden. usually had a pretty good sized garden. And Everyone had to have a pretty good sized oh, garden, yes. otherwise you starve yes. to death in the winter time. That's right. Yeah. Who were Kenny's parents? Of course, I knew this firsthand because they were neighbors of mine. But right. tell us about Kenny's parents and his brothers and sisters, and then tell us a little bit about your courtship and marriage and all okay. of that. Uh, well, his mother was um, Carrie. Carrie. Flood. Yes, Jerry Flood and his dad, Roy Flood. Mm -hmm. They and, lived to be in their late they 90s. Were, yes, yes, he was 97, and I think he was 90, mm -hmm. what did he say? Uh, I did write it down somewhere. He was 93. 93. Mm -hmm. uh, Roy Flood was a master carpenter. Yes. And yes. all he had was a saw, a work uh, mm -hmm. horse, mm -hmm. that's, you know, something right. put his things on, and a square and a level. Mm -hmm. That's all he saw. But that man built some of the most beautiful cabinetry I've ever seen. And he was called upon to build the, um, the doctor's house on Gardner Avenue yes. in Barberton, yes. or in Norton. Norton. That's all he had was that saw mm -hmm. and uh, a couple nails. Mm -hmm. What a cabinet maker, what a and, talent. And what, I know Kenny told you about the stairway he built over there in that yes, house. Yes, mm -hmm. he built the stairway. Mm -hmm. It was different. Describe that to Let's hear that well, story. I can't. All I know is a... I saw the stairway. A, a turn and a half or something. Turn and a half, that's right. It's I don't know. I can't tell you exactly, but he's told it. Mm -hmm. It was ab times. absolutely beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, a perfectionist. Yes. I can remember, oh, many, many years ago that uh, when you're still living at your, well, you're still living at the house where, uh, where you're living, and um, Kenny's dad had to be probably late 80s at the time, or mid 80s or something like that, hmm. and Kenny called him over to help him put a roof on, that is the, um, the, the um, shingle. Yes. Now. That was when they built onto our house. When they built, they built onto your shop. house. Um, <laughs> Kenny's dad never talked when he worked. No. Didn't say a word. But if he did talk, you better listen because he had something to say. Now, Kenny, the most wonderful person in the world, but not necessarily the best carpenter, no. according to his dad, <laughs> no. was up there helping. And this line was so straight that you could have trued your level up with it. I mean, that's how straight it was. Well, 
Kenny was about a sixteenth of an inch off. And his dad looked down that way and didn't say anything, then turned around and started on pounding and says, What's the matter? Can't you see? <laughs> I think he told him to quit. <laughs> I'm sure he would. But that'd be perfect. He did everything perfectly. Just wonderful, wonderful people. And but Kenny's sisters are and brother. Well, his brother was Donald. Don He's been gone for quite a long yeah, time. Yeah, he lived in Southern Ohio. So yes, I down around Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And Mary is is my age. Mary's eighty-three. Uh, mm -hmm. Betty's. Uh, about three years younger. That's young. Mary Smith, Betty All, uh -huh. and Ruthie Stewart. Stewart. Uh -huh. Ruthie is uh, 78 now. She's going to, yeah, she has a birthday this week, as I said. So before, she'll be so 78. She'll be 78. 78, uh -huh. and that makes her um, hmm. 1922, I believe, that mm -hmm. she was born. Beautiful girl. Well, they're all very, very, mm -hmm. very wonderful mm -hmm. people and beautiful people. Tell us a little bit about um, your sisters now. We, um, we, have, we don't want to forget any of those. Well, I just had two uh, Donna mm -hmm. and my twin sister. And I had two brothers. And let's tell, hear about the brothers as well. Um, let's start with Donna. She's the oldest. Donna's right? the oldest. Ninety-two. Uh, yes. Ninety-two. Yes, Ninety-two. Mm -hmm. And she. Uh, well, we've always we've always been close, I guess, because she kind of took us under her wing mm -hmm. always. And uh, I, well, when we were born, I guess my sister was not very well. So Donna took care of me, and <laughs> my mother took care of Ruby because. Mm -hmm. Of, of her not being well. Ruby was your twin sister. Yes. Uh -huh. She lived quite, so, a lot, quite a while. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was in her, in her, I said 13 years. She'd been dead 15 years, so. Uh, so she, that's you know, in the late 60s. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So anyway, um, and then um, she was always the one that kind of pushed us to do things and Donna. get involved, mm -hmm. and yes, you know. And uh, of course my folks did too, but uh, as I say, Donna was being the oldest. Mm -hmm. She just kind of was mother too, you know. Right. Where did your dad work? Well, he was a, a farmer yeah. for many years. many years, and then he uh, uh, took milk from the farm, from the cows, to um, a Tawny's in Barberton, who had a dairy over there. Mm -hmm. T a w n e y s, I think it was. T a yeah t w yeah t a w. Mm -hmm. And then they built a dairy store in Barberton. And then he built one in Doylestown and asked my dad to manage it. So he managed that, I don't know how many years, uh, and then it was sold. And when it was sold, we moved to Wadsworth, and he worked at Firestone then until Firestone. he died. Until he died. Until, and until he, they moved to California in about 1945 mm -hmm. and lived there about 13 years. 13 years. Mm -hmm. Then Ruby, you, and Donna were the girls, mm -hmm. and then the brothers were? My, uh, Gene was the second in the family. Harold was the youngest. And he's been gone for over 30 years. And the um, only two living right now are you and? Just Donna and You I. and Donna. Mm -hmm. And Donna's 92 and mm -hmm. you're 80, uh, Three. 83. Tell us a little bit about um, uh, your own family now, because if we don't get those people in, we'll come to the end of the hour and we won't have them. So uh, you were married when? June, April 15th, 1939. 1939. Uh -huh. So you've, 60 years. 60 years. Already been, you've been married yes. for 60 years. And tell mm -hmm. us about your family and who well, we are. Well, Carol's the oldest. She was born in July of, of um, 40. So she's 59 now. Yes. And Kim. And Carol married. Uh, Jerry. Jerry Logan. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Kim um, is uh, 55. And he married Donna Bring. Uh, from Wadsworth. Her parents worked in the AMP. Donna Breen. Bring. B-R-I-N-G. Bring. Uh -huh. Okay. She had one sister uh, who lives here. And um, let's see. Then Tim's wife died about uh, five years ago or so, and he remarried. Kim. 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 He was the only boy. Right. He's the only one with the flood name. With the other, the Kim floods <laughs> it, huh? Yeah, his, he has one son, Jim, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have any children. And, uh, well, Carol had two children, you know, Mark and Amy. Right, but they're localized. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and then Tim has had uh, three children, two boys, or two girls and a boy. And, uh, and then he has also has a stepdaughter and mm -hmm. a stepchild. And, and he has um, four grandchildren. Now, Carol had a twin. 
No, no, no. Jean and Jane were twins. Oh, Jean and oh, I thought Carol had the twins. No, twin. no. Okay, Jean, Jean and Jane, Jane were twins. Or twins, and uh, Jean passed away. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, about what? Eight or five? About thirteen years ago. That long ago seems like yesterday, but oh my. The same, the same summer, Kenny's mother passed away, oh, and my time. brother also passed away that oh, summer. Oh, mercy! You had your hands full at that time. It was just horrible. Um, and then uh, Becky is the youngest. Mm -hmm. And she was born in 49. 49. So she was just 50. So your baby is 50 and, baby you're, 50 and your oldest one, and she'll kill me for saying this, is 60. Almost. 59. 59. 59. She just 50. had a birthday, so she's 59. Well, so she's 59, and boy, right. she's going to be 59 until <laughs> she gives that up and right. she won't be 60. Um, grandchildren, before we go too much farther as well. Well, we have, we have 12 grandchildren. 12. Mm -hmm. Good. Carol has two. Tim has three. Jean has two, uh, Jane had three, Becky had two. Had two. Now, yeah. and, we have, and we have ten grandchildren and one great-grandchild. One great-great-grandchild. Who's this? <laughs> or great not a, these are great-grandchildren now. We have oh. ten great-grandchildren and one step-great-grandchild. Okay. Now, who lives in Wadsworth yet? Well, Maybe. Jean, the tw one of the twins, she lives in Wadsworth. Carol lives here, Becky lives at Canal Fall, Canal and Tim Fall. lives in Bashley, Georgia. In, in, in Georgia? Yes. So there are no more floods in Wazza no, except Kenny? No, just, just our He's family. the only one. Right. And um, uh, <clears throat> history will tell us that if we want to find floods 50 years from now, we'll have to go probably in the south. <laughs> And the, there won't be any more because I don't think there's going to be any more floods. That's it. Well, they have one. You have, well, uh, yes, Jim, you know, yes. Jim, uh -huh. you know, grandson. So, so that'll be great. Um, <clears throat> where did Kenny work all of his life? Oh, he worked different places. But he ended up with Conval in Wadsworth. He worked there about 20 years. But he worked at, he worked at Boxport for a number of years. He worked at Goodrich uh, during the war, and, and uh, then he had tuberculosis, you know and was in the sanatorium. So um, he, he, didn't, he couldn't go back to Goodrich and do this same job. So, um, well, where did he go then? Oh, he was safety director for four years. He was four, safety director of Wadsworth for four yes, years under? Uh, uh, Burbeck. Under Barris Burbeck, that's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. How about your career? Well, when I finished high school, I went to cosmetology school. Which one, Briggs Lamar? No, it was called Sayers at that time. Sayers, mm -hmm. S-A-Y-E-R-S, uh -huh. where was it? It was in, on Main Street in Wadsworth. It was on South Main Street. Originally, we moved, I think, three times. <laughs> then we moved down to North Main Street and then back again uh, during that time that I was in there. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, who was the who was the person who instructed you? Well, there was um, I can't think. Ines was was Mrs. Sarah's sister. Their son was a, a taught barber, and uh, we they didn't have. It was different than it is now. Oh, you, you know? bet. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have as many instructors, I don't think, mm -hmm. as they have now. And uh, but and if you could. <laughs> Do hair at all, you were put to work. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they work now, but not quite, I don't think, the same as we did at now, that time. Now, you had your own. Then I worked, when I finished, I were in, and got my license. I worked for Mary Barnes downtown. And where was her shop? It was, um, it had been the laundry, mm -hmm. uh, right beside, um, on, on College Street, um, next, College to Street. Warner, next to Warner. Is that Warner Cable has it? Yes, right. Okay, and then the alleyway and then the next building was her beauty shop. And then we worked there for several years and then um, the liquor store wanted to come into Wadsworth right. and so it was, we had to move upstairs. Let's give a geographical <clears throat> uh, location here. We're at the, at the northwest corner of uh, the square. Yes. And we're going west on College Street yes. and it's about, oh, maybe three or 400 yeah. feet west of uh, College Street it was on the first floor. Then the liquor store came, and upstairs there was there were apartments. Or yes, but so. then we, they, I guess 
I don't know if there were apartments at that, if anybody lived there, but we moved upstairs mm -hmm. anyway and had the shop up there until I, it was there for quite a long time. And what was the name of that shop again? That was just Mary Barnes Beauty Mary Shop. Mary Barnes Beauty Shop, mm -hmm. and she was there for You know, all... May Knopf. Yes, right. Uh, it's her mother, it was her mother. Right, mm -hmm. They were there, they were yes. there for years and yes. years. Yes, in Virginia. Neff, Renner Neff worked up there. Mm -hmm. Vera, Vera Bierma I worked yeah, up there. Yeah, she did so. too. She just died not too long yes, ago. Yes, I was so shocked when yeah. I heard that. Died, I think, in California, I'm not positive. In Arizona. Arizona. She was with her sister okay. Margaret. It was out there somewhere. I know it was in the West. Tell us the difference between. Now, you still have a beauty shop. Yes, but I don't work in it anymore. Well, but, it, but somebody else yeah. does, yes. Mm -hmm. But you, you still have the Betty's yeah. Beauty Bar, right? No, Betty I'm, had I'm, her. That was Betty, that was Betty had her own. <laughs> That's your sister-in-law, Betty's Beauty right. Bar. Um, you told us, told us that the, the, it was different in terms of um, uh, the instructors. What else was different about your early beauty days and today? Oh, the way of doing things. How, tell us. We, we did permanence with machines, you know, and uh, you had to be careful. You didn't get burned somebody. To begin with, we called what, had what were spiral permanents, and they were wrapped this way, you know, and they had on these metal mm -hmm. rods. And then you had to put this machine on them to heat it. And uh, and then we had, then later came uh, crokinole, which were just the opposite, went, went across the head rather than up and down. And, uh, and there was another machine that you that had, cl you clipped onto this, after you had it all wrapped, clipped onto the, uh, hair and, and uh, had to heat it for so long. You had to what was the name of that other, the second machine? Crokinole? Mine was a crokinole. Don't ask me how to spell it. Crokinole? Yeah, crokinole. Mm -hmm. Crokinole. Probably a C R O, right? Does that sound yeah, right probably. so far? C R O. C R O. N O L. Crokinole. I'm not sure. I, I, I've not heard of it, obviously. It's, uh, it's, they aren't made anymore. No. What about the chemicals? Did you use chemicals? Oh, yes. Years yeah, ago, had, too? Yeah, the solutions were chemical. Hard on your hands. Hard on your hands. Mm -hmm. And in the same way with coloring or anything, you know, it was, it was hard on the hands. Did you color much in the early 40s and 30s when you were doing this? Not like, not like we do now. What did you color with? Well, you bought coloring from the supply houses, mm -hmm. mostly. Or you could use rinses, which were temporary, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we used to put on um, bluing for white hair, you know. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. To whiten it, or sometimes it would get pretty blue. Yes, I can still remember some of the older ladies would get a really, really heavy blue and mm -hmm. make, them, make them look almost iridescent. Mm -hmm. And then it would wear off and wear off and oh, wear yes. off. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do you remember some of your customers? Oh, yes. I had, uh, there was Edith Flath. She yes. was a nurse. Right. I had Flossie Baker, who was a nurse yes. at one time. Um, Bess Lehman. These are all. This is all when I first started working. I had now Flossie. People. You're talking about Florence. Floss, uh, uh, Florence Baker. No, I'm talking about Flossie. Uh, no, she was Rube Baker's wife. Oh, Rube Baker's uh -huh. wife. Okay, uh -huh. I was thinking of Florence uh -huh. Baker, who married. Um, uh, she died on uh, New Year's Eve one I night. I know who she is. Yeah. Yes, she I know on who Ohio she Avenue. Is. Yes, fair, fair, fair she fair. did at one time. Yes, she was our, kind of behind. Worked, be, lived behind us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh gee, I, I said so many of them are gone. You know that we. Right. Well, of course, we you, you would have done women who were in their maybe 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Yeah. Uh, in the 30s, right. they would be well over 100 years old mm -hmm. now. So yes, they probably are all gone. A lot of women came up from the mat shop mm -hmm. when we were downtown. When did you start your own shop then, Ruth? In, um, I think, let's see, I uh, can't think what it was, but it's been, I've had it almost 40 years. 40 years. Uh -huh. So you started this thing way back uh -huh. in, the, in the 50s and 60s. It was, yeah, it was in the 50s, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good long time. And has it always been in your home? Yes, yes. The, um, what, did you have a room in your home? No, or? we built on. That's what Kenny's dad was working on when he told Kenny not to, <laughs> to not to finish. Not to finish, <laughs> to can't you yeah. see? <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, yes, we built on there. And then uh, uh, I retired about 57, 18 years ago. 
And then um, my daughter Carol and another girl uh, ran the shop. But when I retired, Jane, my uh, twin daughter, mm -hmm. took it over. Mm -hmm. She and Carol were both beauticians. And um, of course, then she got sick, and, and uh, but her husband kept it for a while. Did he? Mm -hmm. And then, um, and Carol and Shirley worked. But I, um, then I took it back, and I thought, it isn't worth it, you know, because bookkeeping and everything was so much oh, more complicated. Was, yeah, much more so complicated. And so that's when uh, uh, someone else took it over. It was empty for a, about a year, and then, mm -hmm. And then this woman needed a place, and uh, she had to move. It's, it's Janice Gainer. It's called here. Janice, Janice. Gainer. G-A-I-N-E-R. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. And uh, it's called Heritage now. Heritage. H-A-I-R. T-A-G-E. 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 Kind of a play on words, heritage, yes, right? Yes, yes. In addition to the machines uh, and the other kinds of things, what about hairstyles? What well, did they you see, were different too. What did you see as a change in hairstyles? I can still remember girls would get permanence and they would have all these little curls oh, yes. and they just thought it was great, you know. Well, you know, uh, when, when I first worked, uh, Shirley Temple was so popular. Yes, and she had So all of the curls. children, and most of the little girls that came in had Shirley Temple curls. And uh, and we used to just finger wave, uh, and sometimes they let it let it that way. You didn't comb through it because we had really uh, um, thick wave setting lotion, and uh, you put a wave in. You expected it to stay for a while, and 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 then um, most people had longer hair then too. There were a lot of short-haired people when I first started working. And, and, a lot, and children had braids. A lot of people had braids, too, at that time. Then we came to the cut, cutting hair, you know, shorter, and then to the bouffants and that sort of thing. And the teased hair? That, I remember that was so. teased. That's how you got the bouffant, uh, mm -hmm. teasing it. Was well, some of them were, were immense. Yes, some were. And, and once in a while, I still see somebody like that. Oh, really? With a hairdo like that. I thought that they would be, you know, the girls or women particularly are so con style well, conscious. I think they're they, usually the older ones that have that. The older ones, right. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you never, never, never did anything to Kenny's hair because that doesn't have any. No. But someone has to do your hair, or do you give yourself permanence? Well... No. Or do you do your See, own hair? Betty All is a <laughs> beautician. Her daughter is a beautician. My daughter's a beautician. So you have beauticians all over the yes, place. Yes, but it's hard to get your hair done. <laughs> I know. I had a brother who had a, a car repair uh, shop, and um, I learned to repair my own car. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And get right. it done. But he said, uh, well, I've never let you down yet. I've always come to pick you up on the road when you've broken <laughs> down. <laughs> and that's so true. Uh, right. That's so true. Um, so. What do you do? You go to one of the other? No, I, I do my own. No, my daughter gives me permits. She gives you permits. And then I can do my hair in between. And you take care I of it in, it, in yes. between. And what about um, um, the years years ago, the women um, who didn't have really all white hair, was white hair a popular thing in those days? or? Well, yes. Um, anyway, of course, a lot of women didn't like it. You know, when it started to get white. Mm -hmm. And maybe you try to use a rinse on it to change a little bit. But, um, and we did coloring, but we didn't do nearly as much as good the girls do now. They do quite a oh, bit of it. Oh, yes. Enough. And they have different ways of doing it, right. you know. You're living in the same house in which you have lived for how many years? 47 years. 47 years. Neighbors 47 years ago and neighbors now. Well, our neighbors then were. Um, Mosier. Mosier is right behind you. Right, uh huh. Or in, the first uh, house north. Let's see, Shannon, Shannon's had lived there for 40 some years Who? too. Uh, Art Shannon. Oh, Shannon, Art Shannon. Because his yes. wife is gone. Lois Douglas. Tell lived us who Art Shannon's wife was. Well, she, she was from Chicago. Oh, she wasn't from. No, she wasn't from okay. Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. And of course, she died a few years ago. And then. And then we had Lois Douglas up the street. Right. Um, Across the street was uh, Hornoffs. Hornoffs, they, they lived there forever. And, and different people have lived 
on up the street, different people, mm -hmm. except Matt and Pease have lived, always lived there. 1934, I believe, yes. Matt and Pease came in, and uh -huh. of course, Don Merriman has lived there since. Oh, yeah, oh, well, forever. <laughs> I, th I, think th I think that Moses sold him the house. <laughs> I surely would like to get Don on the program. Uh, he has more memories. Oh, mercy, oh, what, a, imagine, what a mind for a person. Uh, Don has to be 95 or better right now. Oh, and I'm boy, sure he is. is as sharp as they mm -hmm. come. Just mm -hmm. a tremendous mind. I'd like to get him on the program, but he doesn't want to come particularly. But he's very, very good. I think and he has what, a little hearing problem, too. Well, you know, I'm kind of used to that because almost all of the people who come here have hearing have problems. A hearing problem. um, we try not to let that show on on the on the te on television mm -hmm. because they can they can modify mm -hmm. the the volume. But in some of them, I'm actually shouting at the top of my lungs at the mm -hmm. people, you know, and then they don't hear. But that's all right because you know uh, we aren't dealing with um, you know young, um, uh, vital and vibrant young kids. Right, I mean, right. all of the people who come on the program are up in years. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't look it sometimes, but they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have some in their 60s, but most of them in their 70s, 80s, and a few in the 90s. Um, so it doesn't make any difference whether it's a, I mean, this isn't a finished product. What we're trying to do is to get as much information as we possibly can mm -hmm. from, from our people so that uh, when we write the history for 2013, we'll be able to, um, uh, we'll be able to have um, uh, a lot of good, uh, good background. I'd like to go back just for a couple of minutes here before we run out of time to the days that you were down on Broad Street and um, tell us what was south of you. Right now there is a big building there which is um, uh, which took the place of Jerry Hall's uh, trucking company. Oh yes, the, uh, they have a but Tony's body, body shop. building yeah, shop, body building shop, right. and so forth. And then there's the school and the injector and mm -hmm. so forth. What do you remember about what was south of you when you were there about 60 years ago, 70 years ago? Well, um, Everhart's had a flower shop down Across. there on the east side. And a huge, huge, we have a picture of it now, finally. We have a huge picture of the, um, of the glass um, greenhouses, I yeah, guess they yes. call them, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, then on that side, on the other side, was woods uh, all the way down in there. Down Tommy the Lucas lived on up the street. Right. right. And at one time, there was some one kind of a church yes, in that the, woods. Yes, the tabernacle uh, was down yes, there. Yes, yes. And I have a woman who actually went there, and I've been trying for about a year to get her on the program. She won't come. Uh -huh. But I'd love to have her talk about that. Mm -hmm. If anybody else has anything about that tabernacle, we'd like to have that. What about right across the street? What about the Eagles? Um, well, they weren't there when we were there. Well, who was at the place where the Eagles then finally bought that house? Um, well, Mary Fisher. Mary, Mary Harper. Fisher. Fisher. That's Mary Harper. There, yeah, mm -hmm. she was crippled. And uh, she and Donna were very good friends. Mm -hmm. um, Mary is no longer living, is no, she? No, no. She, she's gone. No. Her Tell mother was, was deaf. I didn't know that. She was deaf, and she was just a little woman, and she talked very quietly, almost whispered. Whispered. But Mary was not a little woman. She wasn't very big, but she wasn't little. No, no. But Donna used to carry <clears throat> lift her and take her from the car. Her uncle gave her a car that was equipped so she yes. could use mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and they, Donna went with her many times because she always had to have somebody with her. Tell us a little bit about, uh, <clears throat> about Mary. Well, she was a talented. She had polio when she was, what? I think Donna said four, and uh, was paralyzed from the waist down. But she drove a car. She drove a car. She did everything. She did everything. She did everything. Absolutely everything. She had a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And never, never did I ever see her without a smile on her face. No, she, uh, she played the piano. She mm -hmm. painted. She kind sold. of a loud voice. Well, not a real loud voice. Did you think? No, well, at least I didn't think so. But. Uh, um, we, have, we saw quite a lot of Mary because living close by, you know. Did she ever, um, did she ever marry? Yes, yeah, she married a Bob Fisher late in life. Yeah, late, uh -huh. really, really, really uh -huh. late and in life. And then he died know. before she, she did. She died, yeah, he, she outlived him. She was not too old when she died, but she wasn't uh, well, young either. Well, she was, um, I don't know how long she's been gone now, but... Um, I think she, she, was a, she was. She's around Donna's age. She was in her fifties or sixties. I mean, she didn't die as a young woman. No, no, no. Uh -uh. I don't remember exactly when she died, but I do know. Now, um, there were three houses there. Mm -hmm. uh, who was in those other houses? 
I was trying to think. Grosses lived in one. Which one? They lived the second one from Mary. That'd be uh, Gross's uh, Meat Market? Yes. And that yeah. would be um, Bill Gross. His, his um, father. father, yes. Yeah, but Bill Gross is dead now. I think. But uh, it's so ironic that he became the postmaster of the post office, which was built in his backyard. Almost, yes. 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 Right. Um, and then uh, Charles Rickard lived next door. His Tell family. us about the Rickards. That, that's such a, a well, great family. Well, I don't know much. Rick, this was Mary Harper's uncle, and mm -hmm. it, it had been uh, the grandparents' house. And, and when we first moved to Wadsworth, the grandmother was still living. And then after she died, um, Charles lived there. Mm -hmm. And then he remodeled it into a two family, and that's where we moved when we were first married. We oh, really? Upstairs there. What did, um, what did uh, Charlie Rickard do? Oh, gee. Well, at one time he had the country club that's out right. here. That's right. He and and uh, another fellow. What, and, where was the country club? Well, an old two twenty, an old old two twenty four out yeah. out beyond. So now um, was called uh, Brookside. Brookside, yes. Uh, at that time, it was called Cyberton Country Club yeah. or Barberton, Barberton Country Club, Island. one of the two. Uh, this is what 40, 40, 45, 50 years ago. Oh, right? oh yes, oh, at yes. least that long ago. Charlie. Oh, Rickard. it's been longer than that. You I think, think since Charlie had it. Yes. Hmm. Oh, I believe Kenny used to. Uh, Caddy. Work out there, caddy out mm -hmm. there, yes. Hey, caddy out there. Because, um, <clears throat> well, it, he said that uh, I think Charlie Rickard was out there when he caddied at, at some time. Well, that, maybe it is. Well, I, was th I was thinking it was in the, in the 40s mm -hmm. or 50s, somewhere though. He said several women had it, in, in, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was after or before Charles Rickard. Right. Then did you, did you know Homer Everhart? Yes. And uh, what can you tell us about Homer and his well, wife? Wonderful, lovely yes, woman. Yes, very nice people. Uh, oh, I can't. I don't know them that well. I knew them like, you know, a lot of people who are neighbors and, and yet not uh, Not intimately not too, and so no. forth. I know he had two boys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, his wife was a Siffert. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. And who were her people here in town? Well, I don't know what her dad's name was. I know. What about her brother? She had Ledema, mm -hmm. was a sister, and um, Don, her brother Don. Don? I thought it wasn't Bob? Don Siffert. No, it wasn't Bob. I think it was Don, Don Siffert. Don Siffert, okay. I might be confused there. They, uh, then he li they don't live here anymore. No, I don't think that uh, none of them uh, lives here anymore. Uh, I think Ladima was might be in Arizona, Is that but right? I'm not sure living? about that. I'd like to get a hold of her. If we can get a hold of her, I'd like to hear, mm -hmm. you know, about the uh, the family there mm -hmm. because we don't have any one of the relatives of the of the Everhards no, uh, right. living. One of the problems we have with this program is that so many of the people are all gone mm -hmm. or they're. You know, people mm -hmm. in the 80s and 90s are just aren't able to, to right, come. Right. We have a 100-year-old woman right now who has a legacy here of um, oh, seven or eight children and all of that. But um, uh, she is very, very coherent, but not always. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she might be talking, and all of a sudden she'll just leave mm -hmm. and be very difficult. Um, she, I talk, I go to the restroom often and talk with her. Yes. Well, I don't have them recently, but I used to go quite often. And talk with her to pick up, you know, some of the things that she remembers. But then, halfway between uh, a sentence, she'll start on something else, and then come back into mm -hmm. it. And I th think it'd be kind of difficult for her right. to, to be interviewed. We have um, uh, a couple more quick questions that I want to ask you about um, uh, your family, uh, and that is um, the <coughs> excuse me the. Um, the floods who are still in Wadsworth uh, right now are Kenny, Betty, and Mary. Right. And Ruth lives in Florida. In Florida, and Don is dead. Is that right? Yes. Don is dead. He lived down in. Um, yes. Down the southern, southern part, part of the southern state. Southern state, right? Uh, Cambridge. Cambridge, Ohio. That's Cambridge. right. Yeah, right there. Um, and to to recap, of all of the Bergners, there are only two left. You and. Donna. Yes. No one else is left. I ha I have a cousin. She's her, of course her name isn't Bergner now, but she lives out on Clark Mill Road, and yeah. her name is Hardy. Hardy. Mr. Hardy. But she never lived here in Wadsworth. No, right? no. She never here and lived here in Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. Ruth, you have brought us just some wonderful, wonderful memories of the past and of a family that has been around for what 70, 80 years, something like mm -hmm. that in the area. And of course, you have been around for 82 years. And um, 
probably somebody, uh, someone whom everyone in Wadsworth knows or knows of, uh, either through you or through your children or through your husband or through your sister or someone. We're all interrelated with that nice, nice feeling of uh, family. Uh, your family has provided so much for Wadsworth and we are ever so grateful that you spent some time with us so that now it will be recorded forever. Ruth, thank you very much. Our hour is up and we certainly hope that it will continue to be this way, that you would look as good and speak as well and probably um, will live to be 100 and be able to tell us what. <laughs> On your 100th birthday, we'll interview you again. Maybe it won't be I doing it, but someone else will. Thanks again, right, Ruth. Thank you. Right.